The so-called Superman of Hong Kong's financial world is finally hanging up his cape. After almost 70 years of building a multi-billion dollar conglomerate from scratch. While Lee ka -shing didn't go around saving people, he's been called a hero for turning simple businesses into massive corporations and for his rags to riches rise from humble beginnings. In the 1940s, his family came to Hong Kong as immigrants from China. With little money, Lee was sent to work in a factory at 13 years old. By the time he was 22, he had founded a plastics company. It would grow to become one of Hong Kong's most powerful business empires. The Chung Kong group of companies, made up of CK Hutchison and CK Asset, is today worth more than $80 billion. From telecommunications and shipping to property, retail, finance and utilities, the company touches every aspect of life in Hong Kong. And it's not just a juggernaut at home. Lee's biggest achievements have involved financial deals with international firms, which catapulted his company into a global powerhouse. Today, the conglomerate has operations in more than 50 countries and employs 323,000 people worldwide. Lee's decorated international career began when he bought a stake in a struggling British trading house and turned its fortunes around. This led to investments in a collection of UK businesses, which also led to him being knighted by the Queen. Lee's eye for business deals shaped CK Hutchison's portfolio to include the world's biggest container port operator, Canadian oil giant Husky, and one of Europe's leading telecoms operators. Lee is leaving big shoes for his successor to fill, and the man chosen to do that is his eldest son, Victor Lee. But the elder Lee is making sure his wisdom doesn't stay untapped. In the future, I will act as the senior consultant of the group, and at the same time put all my efforts into the foundation's work, especially focusing on healthcare and education. It's the end of the road for Lee ka career. Now, it's up to the younger Lee to keep his father's legacy alive. Laila Humaira, TRT World. Diane To is in Hong Kong and has more on Lee ka retirement and what it means for C.K. Hutchison. The news didn't exactly come as a surprise. After all, Li ka did tell the world last year he was going to retire before his 90th birthday in July this year. So now he's finally set a date. He's going to officially retire on May the 10th at the CK Hutchison Annual General Meeting. Well, Li ka whose nickname is Superman here in Hong Kong, told everyone at the news conference not to worry. He's been planning for this for a long time now, and there is a good path forged ahead for the business. Li injected confidence in Victor, his eldest son, who will be taking over the business empire. They've in fact worked together for uh, more than three decades now. Victor said at least for now there are no major plans uh, for restructuring of the company. And Li ka Sheng himself also will stay on with the company as a senior consultant to keep investors comforted. Now, if you look at today's earning results, CK Hutchison reported a 6 percent rise in 2017 profit, beating estimates. Its real estate arm, CK Asset Holdings, saw a 55% surge in annual profits. His ports to telecoms conglomerate is one of Asia's most outward-looking, spanning more than 50 countries. Now, the point is he's leaving his empire in a very good shape. And while analysts point to the huge shoes Victor has to fill, at least his very first steps will be on some solid bedrock there. For more on all this, Chris Roebuck joins me now from London. He's a visiting professor of transformational leadership at the Cass Business School. Chris, great to have you on the show, as ever. Lee ka is a very different entrepreneur yeah. to the brand of entrepreneur that we have today, isn't he? I mean, compared to the Dara Khosrow Shahis of the world, or even the Asia's richest mm -hmm. per person, Pony Ma, for example. What is it? The, what are the main differences between how Lee did it and how the new generation of entrepreneurs do it? I think the, the, the difference is, is fundamentally that he has taken a steady, st structured approach over a period of, let's be honest, nearly 70 years of being an entrepreneurial leader. Uh, whereas the others are, 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 have a sort of more dynamic dive in, do this, uh, uh, and sort of a, a more sort of 
openly proactive way. So it's the, the very outwardly dynamic rather than the slow, structured, steady, careful decisions over a long period of time. But to be honest, both of them are, are equally valid. You know, I spend a lot of time trying to help organizations and leaders be more entrepreneurial. And uh, he, he is an example, an inspirational example of what you can do if you get the decisions consistently right. Yeah, the, the diff another big difference though, I mean, I, now that I hear you say that, I think you're absolutely right, is that a lot of entrepreneurs, mm. especially in the tech sector, go into it with a view yep. to an exit at some point, rather yes. than yes. building the business from the ground up the way Lee did. Arguably, he didn't have a choice at that time, but yep. all that notwithstanding. Yep. I mean, look, a lot of people say he's a very amiable man, um, but he knows how to drive a hard bargain, doesn't he? I mean, what were some of the toughest <laughs> deals that he did? Well, I, I think you can, you can, to be honest, if you were to say, um, the, the best deal, I mean, how tough it was, I'm not sure. The best deal has to be 1979 and getting his hands on Hutchinson from HSBC at half of its book value. I mean, in anybody's language, that, to be blunt, you know, Donald Trump talks about the art of the deal. In comparison uh, to, to, to Lee Gushing, Donald Trump's art of the deal is actually not that significant. I mean, I think that deal was the blinder. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Chris Roebuck, thank you very much indeed.